Good evening. I'd like to call to order the uh, Bloomington Historic Preservation Commission meeting for May 9th, 2024. Uh, Recording in progress. Eddie, you want to take a count for us? <clears throat> yes. Marlene Newman. Here. Ernesto Castaneda. Daniel Schlegel. Here. Sam DeSoller. Here. Ashley Johnson. John Saunders. Here. Elizabeth Mitchell. Here. William Folk. Present. Reynard Cross. Here. Duncan Campbell. Here. Kirsten Hawley. Karen Duffy. Here. Jeremy Hackard. Okay. All right. Thank you, Eddie. Um, so I need approval for the minutes from the April 11th meeting. So moved. Second. All right. All right, moving on to certificates of appropriateness. Oh, right. I just yeah. gotta do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Marlene Newman. Abstain. Uh, Daniel Schlegel. Yes. Sam DeSoller. Yes. John Saunders. Yes. Elizabeth Mitchell. Yes. William Polk. Abstain. Reynard Cross. Minutes carry 403. All right, thank you. Let's move on to the certificate of appropriateness. And we'll start off with my staff review. So we have the minutes of 10, 24, 21 Barber Street. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This first certificate of appropriateness uh, application comes from the Matlock Heights Historic District. The petitioner is Heidi Darling. And she's applying to replace brick window sills um, on her uh, contributing 1960, 1954 ranch house with uh, limestone sills. Um, along with her application, she sent in a uh, picture from Better Homes and Gardens featuring the original design of the five-star home number 2001, which is the model that she owns. Uh, as you can see in this image, um, the window sills are not brick, uh, but appear to be either stone or wood. Uh, Matlock Heights guidelines allow minor uh, changes to the facade to be approved by staff. And I found the limestone sills to be appropriate for the context, both of the home and the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, I also ran the design by the Matlock Heights uh, Design Committee, which I believe uh, the applicant is also a member of, and there was unanimous approval. Great, thank you. Is the petitioner with us? No petitioner? Oh, I think I'm hearing. Oh no, we are we getting audio it. and? Uh, yeah, but you approved right. this, right? Me, uh, right? Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. So that. we don't need her to be here. Mm -hmm. We won't have too many questions. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. So we should move on to commission review. COA 24-11, 308 South Buckner Avenue. A petitioner is Dennis Burke, and I think we have Mark Kinnett and Dennis Burke. Go ahead, Noah. All right. COA uh, 2411 is for a the construction of a two-story rear addition uh, visible from a secondary facade on 3rd Street. The petitioner is Dennis Birch. And the house is located in the Greater Prospect Hill Historic District. Um, if you have access to one of the printouts of the package, you can see that there is a minor change. I had pulled up for my initial review um, the guidelines for Prospect Hill Historic District, which is a smaller and earlier district located within Greater Prospect Hill. Um, this application has been reviewed by the District Construction Committee, which pointed out the error to me and nevertheless approved the current design that you see. 
There's another minor change from what you'll see, not in the floor plan submitted in this packet, but in the uh, 3D models, which I'll pull up in a bit, where um, planning department uh, required the addition to be set back several feet further from uh, secondary facade on the south of the house. So um, that's the design overall is substantially unchanged from what the neighborhood committee approved. All right, thank you. All right, let's do, uh, and I know it's Steve Smith Brookhouse, let's do questions. Sam? Questions? Yes. Uh, I was just wondering if there was a view uh, from the street sort of looking at the porch obliquely from over this way. So there's, I didn't have, see any elevations in the packet, and so that's the little piece of, of mm. the house that is not visible. Let's see. I was going to look through the package and see if. Dennis, you want to address this? Or? Uh, the closest one would be if you look in the lower right hand corner, and that is the south elevation. And if you kind of look in the upper left, that's mm -hmm. kind of an aerial. Did you flip through them again? I don't know. Sure. About all the ones that I sent. I sent about looking through. Uh, yeah. There's oh, the upper. Okay. The upper aerial and the upper left and the lower right might be the best too. And did you not enclose the uh, the elevations? Did they not include the back of the I let me see. Um, some of the elevations are included in the packet, the including packet. the photographs. Uh, All elevations should have been included. I have nine. Let's see. This nine. Plans, but I didn't get, and I got access, you know, 3D views, but I right. didn't get any elevations. You have the 3D views and you don't have the elevations? There's no elevations oh. in, those, in the packet that I got. All right, Sam, anything else? So I guess, I guess the main questions I have are uh, about this guy. Is this roof here, this whole roof plane, the big one that the dormer pops out of, the same uh, matching slope as this guy, this, this roof? Uh, yes, it is. Return, okay. return it from the Okay, and then it sort of kills into the this ridge here, this ridge, and then that yes. kills, okay. Yes, runs back into the kind of extended gable end on the south, yes. Okay. And, uh, and I think that's all I got. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Daniel. Um, sorry, Noah, I just wanted to confirm. You mm -hmm. said that the, the Greater Prospect Hill uh, committee did see the revised they did. altered, and they were happy with they it? They were happy. Um, cool. This underwent a couple of revisions after conversation with the neighborhood. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to double check. That's right. I was trying to mm -hmm. flip through to find a couple questions I had, but mm -hmm. uh, so I didn't quite catch all that, so I just wanted to confirm. Thanks, Noah. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Elizabeth. Okay. Questions? No questions. Renard? No. No. No questions. Franklin? No. Marlene? No questions. Uh, Karen? Yes, I, I have a question. And actually, it was just hard for me to see it because the print was so small on my computer and here too. Mm -hmm. The exist I can see that the existing square footage is, um, total square footage is 1235. 135 square feet, and I'm wondering what the total of the new build structure, the proposed structure, would be. So how much? How many square feet are they adding? Yeah. yeah well, how, how many square feet are you adding? <coughs> the, 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 the building from 1235 was 1730 on the first floor, and on the second floor. Oh. Oh yes. Yeah. Seventeen? I can't believe it. Is that you got it? I can't believe it. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I 
I don't have any questions. We wouldn't be good on Karen. Do we have any questions from the uh, people on Zoom? So with the addition, I'm sorry, with the addition, the uh, first floor area is 17,740 uh, square feet. And that, that includes, obviously, the porch areas on the front, the side. Right. And so the that's about feet. 500 extra there. Yeah, well, actually, no. The, no. the front porch and the side porch really only account for about uh, 140 square feet. Okay. So. And then upstairs? There's roughly about another 600 square feet plus or minus. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so let's move on to comments. Uh, Sam? Um, I think this does a pretty fine job of packing a lot of square footage in a way that lets the main historic part of the house read clearly through. Uh, and I, I mostly like it. Thank you, Sam. Daniel? I like it. I'm glad they went head back and forth with the design committee and, and suggestions were made and everyone's happy, so I think that's a great sign. Thank you, Elizabeth. I concur with Daniel. All right. Yeah. Nice project. Looks, looks very nice. Duncan? Well, looks pretty good to me. All right. Fair. All right. Looks like a good project, Dennis and, and Mark and Karen and Scott. Congratulations. I'd love to come and see it when you guys are finished. We'd love to have you over. Uh, what's that? We'd love to have you over. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, let's move on to uh, COA 24-12. Oh, we need to do it. Oh, I'm sorry, we got to do it. Sorry, guys, we got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm rushing tonight, so, uh, so I need a, I need a, um, a motion. Okay. Right. And uh, who second? Danny. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Marlene Newman. Yes. Daniel Schlegel. Yes. Sam DeSoller. Yes. John Saunders. Yes. Elizabeth Mitchell. Yes. William Folk. Yes. Reynard Cross. Yes. Motion carries seven zero. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Nice. Thank you. Do you want your tub back? No. Okay. <laughs> you guys have a great night. Thanks, Thank Mark. You very much. Thanks, Thank Mark. you, everybody. Have a good have night. night. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> so. All right, let's move on right. to uh, COA 24 12, mm -hmm. 905 South Rogers. And Chris is with us. I'm here. There you go. Do you have some more drawings? I do have some drawings included in the packet. Um, Right. including markups of, I'll go ahead and introduce it. Um, petitioner is Chris Sturbaum, and the application is for installing a rear deck on uh, the back side of a 1924 bungalow that is severely altered, but uh, rated as a contributing structure in the McDowell Gardens Historic District. Um, and the request, as I mentioned, is for the installation of a rear deck and the replacement of part of the <coughs> large parking lot behind the building with planted landscaping. Um, you can see here we some received uh, site plans, including an illustration of the new deck and plans for removing part of the asphalt, it's asphalt, right? Mm -hmm. Parking lot, as well as a mock-up um, of what the uh, proposed deck is going to look like. Can we rotate that? Let's see. I'm trying to remember. Oops. Rotating screen. Hmm. Yeah, you could go to that first picture and I can right. explain a little bit. Sure. So as you drive down the alley, you can see a vehicle. That vehicle is going to have a carport over it, which will serve as a deck. And the carport will be farther back than the vehicle. So 
you don't see much from the street at all, but you'll see something as you go down the alley. And we found an interesting thing when we did the site. The guy sold it to our my friend as is, and he own, he actually owns my friend owns 15 feet of that guy's parking spaces yeah. back behind there. He didn't didn't do his homework when he put in the lot. So that gives us more open space behind the new structure. And there will be a stair going up. If you can see the tail of that truck, there's a stairway that goes up to the deck level and enters the back of the house. And then the deck will be um, above, the, above the car like a tarport. And we're going to put some solid railing on it with cedar so he has privacy because I don't know if you have seen this spot, but it's surrounded by a parking lot in an area that you would like some privacy from. So the top view then gives you the alley is coming down, and there the truck would be in that little square uh, that shows, says new. The little stairs go up to enter the back of the structure, and then that that hashed area is the area that is currently commercial parking lot that is going to be reclaimed as green space. And then if you turn your head sideways, you can see <laughs> the draw of the stairs going up in the deck and the suggested cedar railing that'll be solid instead of open. Nice. Thanks, Chris. Um, so, um, Sam, questions? No. Um, so the, the letter from uh, Mr. Ash, was there anything else from the neighborhood? No, I don't think else from the neighborhood. This is the one comment that I've received from oh. the neighborhood. Gotcha. Thank you. And that's for the question. All right. Thanks, Sam. Uh, Daniel, questions? That was my question. I was just going to see if anyone else had contacted me. No so. worries. Thank you. Um, no questions. All right. Uh, Renard? No questions. No questions. Nope. Thank you. Norman. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't have any questions. <laughs> Let's move on to comments. Uh, Sam? No comments. Daniel? Seems well thought out. Elizabeth? Bernard? <coughs> All right. Phil? Well, Franklin? Marlene? All right. That's unanimous, no questions, no comments. All right, let's move on. Um, I need to have a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Sam, so, uh, you made the motion. Remember? Second. You second. Sam made I'll, motion. I'll move for second, whichever you like. We're giving it to the one. And who seconded? Okay. Is it? Who do you have first? Sam? I, I get Sam, to, he made the motion. Okay. Oh, that's right. 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 Okay, that's what I thought. All no right. Worries. All right, no problem. All right. Okay. Uh, Marlene Newman? Yes. Daniel Schlegel? Yes. Sam DeSoller? Yes. John Saunders? Yes. Elizabeth Mitchell? Yes. William Falk? Yes. Renard Cross? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. All right. All right, Chris. You got work. Well, those 15 feet of parking space were nothing to sneeze at. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's move on to. Uh, mm -hmm. COA 24-13, and I know our petitioner is with us, Linda, mm -hmm. very good. So right. Linda. Petitioner is Linda Napier, um, petitioning to install a prefabricated shed with an extended carport in the backyard of her contributing uh, 1930 bungalow in McDowell Gardens. Um, Excuse me, but I, I'm not the petitioner. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't say Chris? Oh, no. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's in the packet, but, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. He's got to cancel the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think, you know, the correct information was available publicly somewhere, so. This is mine is correct. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I think ours mm -hmm. is right. Oh, see staff comments in 2023, applicant Linda Napier received a COA for the construction of a 12 by 24 foot garage and carport in the backyard of her 1930 McDowell Gardens bungalow. A sudden spike in material costs, we all know how that goes, put the plan on hold. The applicant is returning with a request to install a 12 by 16 foot 
prefabricated shed with an extended roof carport in the same location on the lot. And staff recommends approval of COA 2413. Mm -hmm. um, included are some illustrations of the carport, or sorry, of the shed, which would have a carport extended off of one of the slopes of the roof, as well as some images of the lot as it exists now. I believe the carport would extend over roughly where your car is parked. Where that van is, right. you know, where the black van is. Mm -hmm. And you can find in the uh, packet, we have the quote which describes some of the uh, alterations that are going to be made for the extension of the roof. Yeah. Right, thank you, Bill. Any, any additional information, comments for one time for the discussion? All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, Sam, questions? Uh, have we heard anything back from our neighborhood design review committee? No, I haven't. Oh, oh they are. Great. <laughs> and we wrote the rules. Mm -hmm. You're here. And we have no objections to anything. Great. It's fine. Mm -hmm. a, a yard barn in McDowell, you should just be allowed to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, we can update your guidelines at some point. It's in there. Is it in mm -hmm. there? Yes, sir. Great. Thanks. Okay. Um, we got that worked out. Mm -hmm. Sam, any more questions? You're right. Daniel? Elizabeth, <laughs> Bridgeford, yep. Bill, Duncan. So I'm not clear exactly where it is. Is there a site plan? Okay, so you see my neighbor's fence line, the, the um, stockade. In the bottom fence. picture? Yeah, the bottom picture there with the vans, yes. Yeah. So my, so the shed will actually go within about three feet off of that fence line and then come out 16 foot and then the carport will come from from that that uh, 16 foot. There'll be a 20 foot carport that'll come off of that. Okay, so it's just going to be, and you really are not going to be able to see it. I'm kind of surprised because when we laid it out from from Madison, when you look up, it's not going to be visible. So, um, so is the carport enclosed? The carport is going to have. Um, Sidewalls, but they don't go all the way down. Just to be able to break the the sun and the heat from hitting my van. We don't have a drawing of that, or yeah, there there is. There's a. But it's it's made by. Do you have that, of the do you have that brochure? I have the brochure in my office oh, um, okay. with the uh, design for the carport being put in there. Yeah, well, the, yeah, the, the Waggler is doing the shed, and it comes Waggler out on, in Ellisville, down in the RV through the net, um, and they also are fabricating the roof line so everything matches. Uh, I'm, I'm actually paying to have a customized roof so that everything matches. The yeah, shed. I saw that in the packet. Yeah. It's a nice solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just a. I guess the best way, it's going to have this kind of a roof line that matches the shed, but it'll have third of a wall down mm -hmm. on the side like that. So is it just is it coming with the length of the of the plan or is it going to the side of the it's going the length. So it's just going it's this straight way. yep, straight okay. up. That's, that's yeah. Good. It was cost prohibitive to do it any other way. I was originally gonna put gravel down or a uh, concrete down the concrete was eleven thousand dollars <throat> What little bit of concrete work I wanted done. So I am going to put gravel down to the alley, and I mean it'll be it'll be put in really pretty. I'll probably run six by six posts all the way around to kind of frame that whole area in. But it'll be really nice space when I get done with it. If you guys saw my house before I bought it and what it is now, 
is, is a, you know, Rainy day. yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it really is, it's pretty much a dog baby thing. Um, so any more questions, Duncan? Um, I guess I'm just trying to figure out if this is a prefabricated single shed that is then yes. being altered or if it's, be, if it's new construction all the way through. No, it's prefabricated by Wagler at, down in Montgomery, Indiana, so they'll bring it up. They're matching the roof line of the shed right. to the carport. So, or the carport people are matching the, the shed roof line. They're, they're all getting their metal from a uh, graver, so. Everything's coming from the same place. Mm. There's two different fabricators. Marlene, any questions? No. Karen, any questions? No. I haven't got any questions at this time. So let's move to comments. Uh, Sam? No comments. No comments. Daniel? No. Elizabeth? Bernard? No. Bill? Duncan? I don't have any objection to it. I, but my only comment is when there's construction, if there's a prefab shed and you can, it's getting set down just like it is, we ought to see a picture of it. If there's construction on it, we should see that do illustrated. You have that, do you have that other brochure, Noah? The I mean, the, that's the picture. I mean, it should be right. set on a site plan. We should be able to see the area it takes right. up. We should see what the alterations are. We don't have any of that information. There's no alteration to the You're shed. You're putting a new, a, a new roof on an existing building. That's an alteration. It's not a new. No, I'm not putting it. It's the roof is coming on the shed. All they are doing is marrying the carport to the shed. So, so the carport's new construction. It's not, no, it's everything's new. Everything's new. Uh, it's all fabric. So it's all coming on a truck and being set down as one yeah, piece? Yeah, it comes off, it'll be on a, it'll be on a runner. Okay, thank you for explaining that. All right, thank yeah, you. And then, they, and then I just came to tie it down. Sorry? And then I just pay to have that tied down. You run those big stakes and tie it into the ground. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? Any comments from the people on Zoom? All right. We need a motion. I move we accept COA 2413. And I second. <coughs> Marlene Newman? Yes. Daniel Schlegel? Yes. Sam DeSoller? Yes. John Saunders? Yes. Elizabeth Mitchell? Yes. William Falk? Yes. Reynard Cross? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. All right. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You guys have a good night. All right, let's move on to our demolition delay. Uh, our first demolition delay of the evening comes from petitioner Corey Gearhart, who I believe is attending on Zoom. It's for the full demolition of a contributing garage that is contemporaneous with the 1950 uh, minimal traditional ranch house at 424 Wiley Street. Um, both the house and the garage on the lot were owned between the 50s and 1970s by a couple, Maurice and Bonita Reeves. Uh, Maurice was a car salesman and Bonita sold tires. So, you know, there's a bit of a auto connection there. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I could not find much specific information on the uh, garage. Thank you. Thank you, Noah. Um, so we have, uh, I know it's just uh, Gary's here, yeah, Corey's here. So um, let's do some questions, Sam. Uh, just to clarify our options here, uh, letting it go or landmarking it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, no questions. All right. On that one. Comments? Uh, it's always sad to see uh, compatible we'll go, but. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Daniel? Um, how how long? Sorry, I'm just a little slow. Uh, how long has Corey owned owned the building or owned the property? Do we know? Uh, my partner bought it about four years ago. Okay, and I'm just curious how how was the condition of the garage at that point in time? Was it in, was it in like it basically its current state or, or what? 
Yeah, more or less. I mean, it has deteriorated somewhat in those four years because it's missing, you know, exterior wall areas. Uh, the, the base plates are severely rotted out in certain areas. Uh, so rain getting in, you know, has continued the process that was well underway. Uh, from what I've seen just before we bought the house, it did have a hand permit, and the hand permit specified that tenants should, I think, basically just not be allowed anywhere near the garage. So that kind of describes the condition. Okay, thank you. That was my only question. Okay. Thanks, Danny. Elizabeth? Right. Question or comment? Bernard? No question. Up Bill? Duncan? Marlene? No. Uh, I don't have any questions on this, so um, we need to take the vote to let it go, and we'd be starting it. Today, regarding the property located at 424 Wyman Street Garage, the Historic Preservation Commission declares that it got notice of proposed demolition, and after today's discussion, sees no need to review the plans any further and waives the rest of the demolition delay waiting period. The HPC may later recommend the property for historic designation to the Common Council. All right, thank you, Sam. Second? Okay. Vote? Who seconded? I did. You did? Okay. Sorry. Marlene Newman? Yes. Daniel Schlegel? Yes. Sam DeSoller? Yes. John Saunders? Yes. Elizabeth Mitchell? Yes. William Falk? Yes. Reynard Cross. Yes. Motion carries 7 0. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Corey, for being with us tonight. Thank you. Is there any problem with me leaving the call at this point? Oh, you can go. Okay. Terrific. Thank you for Thank attending. You all much. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. All right. <clears throat> we have uh, our next demolition delay is uh, 2214. Uh, let's see. 15. I, I'm sorry, I missed the place. 2214 through 2217. No, 18. 18. 18. Yeah. We're going to mm -hmm. combine those as mm -hmm. one because they're all in a row uh, mm -hmm. instead of going through individual ones. Okay. All right. So all these homes are located on the 300 block of North Jefferson Street, uh, built between 1940 and the early 1950s, um, which there's some unfortunately sparse information on what year between 1950 and when they first show up in uh, city directories, uh, some of those houses were built. So um, starting off, uh, 2201 East 7th Street is a described in the uh, Indiana State Historic Sites and Structures Inventory as a house, circa 1940, which is true, was built in 1940. Um, 2201 E 7th Street is distinguished by a corner porch and bay window protruding from the center front, center front gable. The house has been minimally altered with the replacement fenestration. From 1950 through 1959, the house was owned by IU chemistry professor Robert Fisher, an expert in electromicroscopy, Fisher was stationed at Oak Ridge, Kentucky during World War II for a researched heavy water for the Manhattan Project. During his time at IU, he studied the efficacy of fluoride in toothpaste. Uh, for its part in this study, Indiana University was given the patent to Crest Toothpaste, which it held until the 70s and helped fund the Oral Health Research Institute at IUPUI in 1968. All right. All right. Uh, would we like to do questions and comments in individual houses or move through? Yeah. Okay. Um, 310 North Jefferson Street is a minimal bungalow built in 1945. It was occupied during the 1950s by Donald Baugh, who was a driver for Indiana University. From the 1960s onward, the house has served uh, as a rental property, uh, periodically standing vacant. The house retains most of its historic integrity, although the siding and fenestration have been replaced. Uh, county property records indicate that a secondary structure on the lot was demolished in 2006, um, which had an approximate value of $7,000. Judging from the grading of the yard, I don't think it was a garage. 
So probably some other sort of outbuilding. Um, DD 2416 is for 314 North Jefferson Street, which is a uh, minimal ranch and is the mirror image of the next demo delay item, which is the house next door at 318 North Jefferson Street. Uh, 314 North Jefferson was built in the early 1950s. Um, as early as I can could find out from 1957, the home was owned by Anna and Russell Gross, who lived on the site until 1965. Russell was a corporal in the US Army during World War II, and uh, later in his career was a janitor at Indiana University. Anna received her BA and MED at Indiana University um, at the age of 39 before going on to teach at Unionville Elementary. Uh, interestingly, uh, Anna was born Anna Lee Deckard on Deckard Ridge Road um, in what's now Yellowwood State Forest. She attended the Deckard School, which was uh, reputedly staffed entirely by Deckards, and most of the students were also named Deckard. Um, Anna, early in her career, taught in a number of one-room schoolhouses around Brown County, as well as teaching at Camp Atterbury during World War II. Mm -hmm. DD 2417 for 318 North Jefferson Street, um, which was built approximately at the same time and mirrors uh, 314 North Jefferson Street. In the late 1950s, it was occupied by IU French professor Edward Najam. Najam sat on as many as 11 committees with the university, state, and at the national level including the Rhodes Scholarship and Woodrow Wilson Fellowship Selection Committees. From 1958 through 1963, he was the Assistant Dean in the College of Arts and Sciences, where he also served as Acting Dean. For his work promoting uh, French language education, he was inducted into the L'Ordre des Palmes Académiques by the French Republic. In 1960, the house was occupied by Howard Smith, a non-faculty scientist in the Indiana Geological Survey. 2418, as far as I could gather, it looks a little older, but um, everything I could say see indicates that this uh, bungalow was built in 1940, and it appears to retain uh, much of its historic integrity. Um, from 1952 through 1953, the house was bought and owned by Charles Munson, a bar manager who died in a traffic accident at the age of 39. Uh, his widow sold the house, and over the following two decades, um, the home was occupied by a succession of lecturers and students in sociology and psychology, including uh, academic, psychology, academic sociologists such as George Pesethis, a child psychologist, Louise and Dale Gilsdorf, <coughs> Um, gender studies researcher Don Ouster, as well as his wife, business professor Nancy Ouster, a student and peace activist Joe Grabble, and Japanese uh, philosophy student Ori Khan. In 1978, which generally falls out of the period that we consider uh, historic by national standards, um, but noteworthy for this house, it was bought and occupied by IU sculpture for professor Jean-Paul Dario, who's best known for the red, black, blonde, and olive statue at Showers Park, which is the kissing limestone faces, um, as well as the bronze Adam and Eve statues in Dunn Woods on the Indiana University campus. His work has been featured in the Hirshhorn and Guggenheim and often concerned subjects of race, gender, and sexuality. After Dario passed in 2007, his wife, Sherry, a longtime yoga instructor at IU, sold the house to a rental company. Um, additionally, there's a picture of the house as it appeared in 2003. Uh-oh, this should be plugged in. I could do this. Okay, that's, 
-hmm. This image shows what it looks like 20 years ago. Comes from the John Paul Dario papers in the IU archive. Uh, we also received, or I received a few phone calls from individuals in the neighborhood. Um, I also heard there may be uh, some people attending. Um, I didn't receive any specific objections to uh, demolitions for any of these buildings. There were some concerns about um, maintaining mature trees on the lot, as well as some curiosity about how any proposed construction would affect sewage or parking. Okay, let's, let's hold up for a minute. There you go. All right, you're back ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. <clears throat> Anything else, Noah? Um, I mean, unless we have any questions. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we all know, you know, our choice is to send the city council uh, to de designate these as historic or to move forward with demolition of the houses. Um, so questions or comments at this point, Sam? Given that this um, entire parcel is zoned uh, multifamily, residential multifamily, I uh, don't have any questions. Um, Daniel? Um, and I, I should have emailed Noah to ask some of this in advance, so I apologize, mm -hmm. Noah. But, um, so I bike right by here when oh. I go into work sometimes. So one of the signs nearby says, welcome to Historic Green Acres. Mm -hmm. Is that? That's just, the historic, yeah. that's, that's, this just misses that? Yeah. Okay. Well, I just wanted to check. This is part of the, there's no historic district in Green Acres. There is a, there's a neighborhood association which has been inactive and has since, there have been a few people interested in uh, becoming active with it again. Um, after speaking with uh, one of the members of the Neighborhood Association. It doesn't sound like there's currently a lot of neighborhood interest in the historic district, but um, Just there are- Just all the sign frequently, so uh, Yeah, I will say there is a couple blocks down a pretty significant uh, 19th century house. Okay. And that I believe is both locally and nationally registered. Um, mm -hmm. I was just curious because you know, as I go through right. there, most of it mm -hmm. are houses like this. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious that big of a swath. Um, mm -hmm. I know I don't know what legal is at their end of the day, but you know, we're always reminded. You know, mm -hmm. we're not allowed to speculate right. on what may be, but mm -hmm. just because these are all these homes, just how much of the fabric of that neighborhood mm -hmm. is going to be significantly altered? Mm -hmm. But the, the I will right. say that the last house mm -hmm. in particular really gives me heartburn just mm -hmm. because it looks like it has been so lovingly restored. It does have, you know, they all have some history to them, but that, that mm -hmm. last house, uh, oops, I'm oh, too scroll far, through. So I'm, but whatever the last house is, that the yeah. sunflowers right. in it a lot, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the green that one, one in particular just really gives me a lot of heartburn and pause on this. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I was, I understood most of it until that house, and that's the one that, mm -hmm. that I'm hung up on. You, you can, I mean, you can look at the effect of the demolition District. You can look at alternatives to demolition. Um, you know, you, there are other. I mean, you can consider sort of that effect. Okay, I wasn't sure how far because I know in the past they're like, well, you can't speculate on what's. So I just didn't know what was yeah. possible. Right. Right. And different parts of the neighborhood too are built out at different periods. So this western end is sort of the older end of Green Acres. And then a lot of, especially the southeastern part of the district, is more late 50s and 60s. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Noah, I can't recall, but are there guidelines for uh, that district? Maybe? For Green Acres? Yeah. yeah. No guidelines? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, Elizabeth? It doesn't seem that any of them, except maybe the first one, are in that bad of shape. So I'm just curious about attempts to save them. Um, so area zone multifamily. Mm -hmm. So um, obviously we could forward this to city council to designate it as a sort of district. Be our other option here. Yeah, I hate to really see any of them go. To be honest. Okay. Bernard. 
we're doing questions. Mm -hmm. Questions, comments, do you have it open? I mean, I, I, again, have an issue with tearing down houses that could be, that appear to be, you know, okay. habitable or, or if not easily made so. Um, I do understand the options, but. Okay, Bill. Yeah, I guess I would just have a comment. Uh, I think I heard they're all in a multifamily area, so there's been a decision by the city that that's what goes in this area. It's always sad to see homes go, especially that last one. I, I concur. That's that's a gorgeous little home, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the one that's the most painful. But um, unfortunately, in the grand scheme of things, this is where the city has chosen that multifamily uh, is the highest and best used in, in this area. I'm sorry, maybe I missed something. Who, who owns these houses? Who owns them? Did you say we're not? Yeah, who owns them? I can give a little background. Yeah. So <laughs> the purpose of getting the demo permits is just to satisfy a contingency in a real estate transaction. My client doesn't want to purchase the houses if he can't eventually redevelop them and there are no plans. He would just explore low density student housing options. Um, the homes are beautiful, but you know, they are very old and some things in them are beyond repair. Um, so, I have a question for What's a demolition permit issued? How, what's, how long has it been for? I think we were told a year, but he doesn't. I think it's a year. Yeah, let me, I want to look. Um, I actually think you it's know fixed, yeah. Right. You know, it's a year. So, <coughs> I'm looking at the notice provisions. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, let me look that up. Um, did you already issue an opinion on that, Noah? On an the, opinion on whether they should be released? Well, no, or? the, the one-year period that she just mentioned. Did you um, have a conversation? We, we spoke about it when we uh, met with the planning department. And my client has done mm -hmm. this before, so I think maybe mm -hmm. that's something. That told me. That may be not in it. Are, are, do you think that's a, I'm thinking that's a UBO. Uh, we don't have do a planning department. We, we don't have anybody today. from planning today. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, hi, this is Eric. Oh, it's Eric. Eric. Oh, hi, Eric. Mm -hmm. there. Um, if you'd like to restate the question, I can try to help you guys. Uh, it's real easy, Eric. Once a permit is issued for demolition, how long is it good for? Uh, one year. All right. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Mm -hmm. Okay, one year uh -huh. is what we have. <coughs> Duncan? <coughs> Same old problem. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to think of what the rationale for a district would be. The only thing I can come up with is noted university <laughs> faculty housing. And car salesman. And a couple of national homes. Mm -hmm. And certainly old enough to be in a historic district. Yep. I can't, I didn't drive by here this time, so I don't have a sense of the context. I know this is the older part of the neighborhood. I mean, I, I guess I just say for as an advisor that the fact that it's multifamily zone doesn't mean that these, if they were put in a historic district, couldn't still stay here and be and be used as single family residences. The fact that it's been zoned that way doesn't mean that they have to go. Mm -hmm. That that's that. I mean, that's I get that that's a consideration. Because it seems inevitable, but it but it's, if you put a historic district in here, there's nothing inevitable about it. You you would override. You would have a higher zoning than multifamily. So <clears throat> I would, you know, if that's the rationale that everybody's looking at, you know, now are they do they deserve to be a district? We don't have enough information about the rest of the context to know that. Yeah. No one can. Can you pull up a map of where they're located at? It seems like I, I didn't see. buy them either. Um, I think I looked at it, and I think they're right adjacent uh, to the university. Yeah. They are. Right? They're about as close as you can get from Green right. Acres to, 
Yeah, that's probably why he wants to buy. Yeah. I'm pulling up the uh, or parking lot on the other side of the street. Most of them yeah. just have street parking. Yeah, that's, that's what I, I believe that yeah. one of the homes yes, has a small parking lot in the back, but I can't remember. I thought there was a large Um, yeah. 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 I think closer to 7th Street, there's a few houses across the street. I'd have to fill up a map also. Okay. Um, just a second. I've got a map coming up. See, okay. Here's the uh, state historic sites and structures inventory. Um, this See if I can add in a uh, overlay that shows you a little more context. So labels. The block that we're looking at uh, up on North Jefferson Street, along here. And so, um, I mean, you can kind of tell by the street patterns uh, how the original area that was platted up in, I believe, 1940, uh, follows sort of a grid. Then the eastern part of the district has more sort of curving uh, post-war layout. There's a couple of notable structures in the neighborhood, as well as this uh, outstanding structure, which I've mentioned is, I'm not sure if it's an eye house, but it's from Yeah, it's University Andre. Sorry, no, with, with this view, where are the houses that are in? Right here. Right up here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And where does Green Acres technically fall? Where does Green Acres technically fall? Um, I'll see. Everywhere north of 3rd Street, did you see all those purple dots? I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I could say roughly. Um, yeah. That grid. You know. Mm -hmm. In this area. Noah, can you pull up Google Maps? Sure. Yeah, because I'm looking at it, and it says imagery for this particular street was in 2023. Mm -hmm. So it kind of gives a fairly current idea what that neighborhood's like. Do you want to go on street view? Yeah, please. Okay. So. You can see uh, first house, 2201. Mm -hmm. These are all the side of the street on the east. Uh, you can see it's sort of more of the same continuing down the road. I'm just going to yeah, take you on a little spin. Oh, okay, this is 2007. So you can see, yeah, a couple of the houses east of there are a little more modern, mostly still minimal traditional. Yeah, Roosevelt. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So it's Jefferson and Roosevelt, um, which. Okay. All right, Duncan. You were talking about that. We have a chance to look. Well, it's pretty consistent in a, in a tight, in a tight uh, context. It's like say two streets, three streets. So that's, I mean, that's a good thing if you're going to try to write a narrative for the history of it. But, you know, you'd probably have to, I don't know, what do you think? No, you'd probably have to hit 1940 as an area of, era of significance and right. exclude pretty much anything that wasn't within a decade of that. <clears throat> I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure the narrative could be fabricated, whether mm -hmm. it's convincing or not. It's, it's always hard with mid-century stuff because mm -hmm. it's not it's not as consistently it's not as the architecture isn't as consistent door to door as it would be say on West 7th Street um, and the, the, the period build outs tend to be tend to happen they tend to they tend to f be developed by filling in lots and so there's usually a time span that's you have an era of significance that's greater Right. As you can see, um, 
yeah, a few of the older houses on these blocks were built right about when this was planted in 1940, and then most of the rest come after the war for that. Yeah. So. So there's a there's a, probably a context of pre-war houses, which seems like these are, and then it's probably jumps to after the war. So you probably have to stay or try to stay within the pre-war context as a district. <coughs> If it's helpful, the mm -hmm. western half of Green Acres, west of Clark Street, was platted out first. Right. In, uh, I want to say in, in the late 20s, maybe? Um, and then I believe it was in 1948 that the eastern half <coughs> platted out. Either 48 or 52. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Sure. So I have a couple of questions. One is, well, these these um, houses are all contiguous, so does that mean that the lots can be aggregated? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Eric, are you still with us? Yes, I am. So can those lots be aggregated together to form one parcel through a large development? Yes, so that is that is allowed to be considered one zoning lot. So if somebody owns multiple contiguous properties, they all have to be physically touching um, to be developed as one site. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and so then, um, since this is a fairly large piece of property, um, I would envision a fairly large scale development, which would then kind of destroy the continuity of the existing single-family houses, which is kind of, um, I mean, one of the pushes, there, I mean, they're twofold. One is that uh, there, there's a need for um, lower income housing in the city that's been stated multiple times by the present administration. So. Um, it, it seems like a real missed op opportunity plus a dis destruction of the con continuity of, of an existing neighborhood. I don't know what the, if the majority of the houses are owner-occupied or presently um, rentals. And if they're rentals, that would give you the reason for not having sort of a, a request for some sort of a neighborhood association or whatever. Um, the other thing is that the, it's just a thought. <laughs> But the demographics, the student demographics are going down. So the numbers of students actually are going down. I don't know whether I use, well, yes, that's true, because the baby boomers had a, a shadow of the baby boomers. And my kids, who are now 35, were the end of that. And the actual numbers of people, young people, has gone down, because it was a shadow of the baby boomers. So um, anyways, uh, that having been said, continual development of student housing without some sort of aspiration to develop low-income low or single-family houses that are affordable in the in the town seems to be a missed opportunity. And I, my, my understanding was that I use enrollment was up 25 percent. It may have been, but what I'm telling you is that the actual number of students who are, so like, we'll start at the top, the pecking order, okay? I'm gonna say it's Harvard. I have a prejudice there. And so there are fewer numbers of students, so that makes it easier to get into Harvard, that makes it easier to get into the next rung and the next rung and the next rung. And until eventually, um, people will be going to higher valued schools than IU. Um, it's just a, like today's paper, Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, Northwestern, whatever. So anyways, uh, the new Ivies. Um, so the idea that you keep building more student housing and not affordable housing for general population seems to be a miss, you know. Uh, I, might, I might also say that we are getting a little sideways from the yeah. HBC scope. Right, so, okay, so, but the idea that you can aggregate the lot and build an enormous building, which is, counter to the scope, the scale of the existing neighborhood is the first point. And then the other thing is, did anybody talk to BRA? These things are, you know, they're very, 
movable. uniform and movable. Can I make a comment? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, they would not build large scale apartments or even combine those lots. So. Well, I, I, to my knowledge, that future use is not something that we can consider. Right. That's no, not that I, is I, against our rules. No, I, so. I get that. I get that. But, but the idea, a conversation about taking a district that could be maybe historic and then seeing what, why you might consider it would be this, you know, destruction of scale. I, I think that's a design issue and it's not so much a zoning issue or any other kind of issue, but it is a design issue and it is a historic preservation issue. So, um, which is the destruction of scale. I think this is one of those great topics that we need to stick on an agenda with the city council when we get them encouraged enough to have a work session. Thank you, Marjorie. Okay. Um, thank you, Maureen and Karen. Well, um, I, along Marlene's lines, even though we're not going right. to get into this too deeply, but um, a question for planning could, could, um, Eric, you're still with us? Eric? Are you there, Eric? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's my understanding that not only are the lots, you know, contiguous lots a possibility, mm -hmm. but the height could go to, is it four stories? Four and a half? Four. I just want to clarify. Yeah, so, so this is clarify zone that. R4. Mm -hmm. um, so in the R4 zoning district, uh, the base maximum height uh, that is allowed is uh, 35, or I'm sorry, 40 feet. Okay. Four stories. I don't think it's zoned R4, is it? RM, I think. It's zoned RM, Eric, I believe, not R4. Uh, let, me, let me check. I'm sorry. I thought I looked earlier and I thought it was R4. Hold on a minute. No. R4 prevents them from doing it. <coughs> Could be a whole different story if it was on four. Yeah. So RM is three stories not to exceed 40 feet. Thank you, Sam. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it is on RM. Uh, I apologize. I, I looked at this earlier. I thought these were in the R4. Um, so in the RM district, um, then you can you can obviously go taller. Uh, the maximum height is three stories, not to exceed 40 feet. Thank you. Okay, and I I want to compliment um, Noah on the historical information on on these packets that's been coming through. I, I really enjoyed reading them, and I really appreciate the detail. Well, thanks, Karen. Mm -hmm. So what's the will of the commission? Do we want to move forward and send this to city council to have the lot designated historic on uh, its own? Or do we want to have a comment? Too? Uh, right, uh, public comment. We got both. I'm getting ahead of myself again. And we do have uh, Steve White with us as well. So do we have any public comments at this point? Yes, we, oh, I see we also. Chris had a Chris. Comment. Mm -hmm. Chris. Thank you. Yeah, it's so, it's sad to see this. This is workforce housing. And the history of it was that it was workforce housing as people could buy, start to buy houses after the war. And it's what the, the city needs, this workforce housing for people to own and have houses. But Green Acres is the history of change and failure to protect the neighborhood really. You know, if you go through Greater Green Acres, you see all kinds of nightmarish transformations of these structures and, you know, gravel parking lots that take up most of the yard and, you know, but that's, that's just how it goes, you know, that the development pressure, the economics push this too hard and the dirt, the ground is worth more than the houses. But I, I suggested last time we walked, watched five houses get uh, doomed to future demolition that 
the value of these houses if they were moved, if there was a plan, if there was a little subdivision where we knew they were going to go. And this is going to keep happening. This whole area is zoned and doomed in certain ways as these come up. And as the value of material just skyrockets, they, the value of these sitting houses becomes greater. And that, you know, that we heard, we were talking, we heard from the mayor the other day that even Habitat has trouble getting under 250000 to make a house because those are just the economic realities. But I think we need a kind, some kind of a plan to, to save them in the way that they can be saved recreate this kind of neighborhood in an area that the ground isn't so valuable, isn't so close to the university. And that's, that's my thought of a kind of solution where we have, we save this value, you know, we don't put all this uh, embodied energy into the dumpster. You know, those can, they could be going onto foundations and mothball and then find a solution for them, an owner for them, you know, I mean, this is a really, it's an opportunity to create the kind of housing that we need for a lot of people. And each one of these people, where they were just getting jobs at the university, they needed a house. They lived in these modest, small houses, but they were all productive workers in the city and at the university. And anyway, you get that. I, I'm just sending it out and thinking ahead, and, and it's a long range idea, but it, Certainly, it's a great it's really give us a com more comfort when we say goodbye to these houses as they as they move yeah. on to higher yeah. use of that land. Thank you, Chris. I have something. Um, someone involved in this project is on Zoom. I would like to right. make a comment, right. so I don't know Absolutely. if we can arrange that. Uh, is this Richard Lewis? I see he has his hand raised. No. No. Um, What's his name? Ernest. Sable? Ernest. There you go. I don't see an Ernest. I, let's see, there's there's an iPhone guest. Can you see phone numbers? That shows uh, phone number? No. See. No. No. I, I would assume it's the iPhone guest then. All right, so he All just right. dropped off term again, and let's see if he'll introduce himself. Mr. iPhone, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. can you introduce yeah. yourself, please? Oh, perfect. Hi, my name is Ernest. Um, I uh, own valuable construction here in uh, Bloomington, um, and uh, I'm involved in this project on the construction standpoint. Um, realistically, I've been through several of the homes, and um, and I actually uh, had a meeting with Habitat this week. Um, but we do a lot of the more affordable new construction homes in Monroe County, specifically in Bloomington and Ellisville. Um, in the area, and uh, it, uh, the last commissioner was correct, it is very hard to build a finished product, even with volunteer, for under ten or 50000 The, However, the um, biggest issue that we run into is really the value of the land, especially in a neighborhood like what you might be suggesting. Um, even on, you know, dense lots, you know, the value of those lots being what they are, plus the cost of moving a structure that is in fairly rough shape and getting it to uh, a final product that you, know, you can turn over a warranty pushes it to a similar point as a new stick built house even with the current material prices and labor prices that we can honor. All right. That, sorry, mm -hmm. that, was the, that was the main comment. Um, I think I was at the... Uh, last uh, meeting where a package of homes was being looked at for dem you know, demolition and I remember that being raised at that point and it you know, in some ways would be uh, an artistic approach to you know trying to save and recycle something but the true economics of it are very challenging especially because of the distance um, these homes would have to travel and the size of these homes. Um, unfortunately, it's doubtful that a neighborhood on the east side of Bloomington could exist that would have lots under $100,000 to put something like this on, even if city planning could 
uh, uh, you know, create such a development. I, I, would, see. I would add one mm -hmm. comment to that, that this wouldn't work without supplemental support from the city in the way of land or the county in the way of land. Could be a county project as well. But yeah, economics that won't come out even either. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Steve? I had a couple things I wanted to add. It seems to me that uh, you might want to give this a little more time and not release it today because now that it's been in the media, there may be people within the neighborhood that, that may be concerned and may want to see about the creation of a district. Uh, so I don't know if you've heard from anybody in the neighborhood. That's just, that's just a thought. Because I think when it comes to designation, having a neighborhood wanting it goes a long way towards its passage. houses are pretty movable. They're, they're, they're linear, they're not too tall, but we have a problem, I think, in Bloomington with the way the delay works when it comes to these houses. There's not enough time. Uh, I mean, we, our, our group has a time has, has gotten options on houses that are going to be demolished, and we've marketed them to people who want to move them, and we've had success in some houses being moved. But if it's going to be coming down in six months, then that's a lost cause. There's no point in trying to do anything. It takes six months just to find somebody. It's another six months to get um, all the permits you need and acquire the lot, and then you got to move the house. So it, it could be you know 14, 15 months. Uh, and if, it, if you've got six months, then it's probably not going to happen. Nobody's going to even try because it's there's no time unless you just unless you're unless our group or somebody who wants to move it is the one that's involved from the very beginning then it, then it could work but that's a lot of that's a lot of risk and people generally don't want to take that kind of risk so i think that's something to just look at is maybe some way to this is going to be happening over and over again to look at demolition delay and find out ways that you can extend the time for houses to be demolished uh, so that there is an opportunity to move them because this house could move to you know Clear Creek, right. you know, you, you cut off a little bit of the roof, and it goes down the road, anywhere. I have a comment in regards to the neighborhood yes. supporting it. Do we, like Noah, do you have statistics on how many homes in there are rentals? Because I would say a good amount of homes in that neighborhood are rental properties and yeah. not owner-occupied. Yeah, it's a very high percentage. Yeah, I don't have that information. Um, it's available. I mean, the people. Yeah. Anna, do you know? Mm -hmm. I live there and I'm not occupied and I concur. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. But it keeps us young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I mean, as you might expect, uh, I think the western end of the district is more rental heavy. Yeah, right. it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's closer to campus. Yeah. It makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. We also have a hand raised uh, yes, uh, in, on yeah. Zoom from a Richard Lewis. Yeah, Richard. Hi. Uh, yep. Can you all hear me? Is it? Yes. Great. Thank you. I appreciate the time and thank you for, for uh, what you all do. Um, I would echo a, a good chunk of uh, Chris Turban's comments and, and also the, the idea floated to possibly extend the delay if possible to uh, since I think the, the article in the HT was just published today about these houses, as I said, to allow the neighborhood to, to be, become more aware of this and to weigh in. And in particular, 324 North Jefferson, uh, the one that appears to be an older uh, craftsman style bungalow, uh, to me, carries so much history with it uh, for somebody who affected both town and gown uh, with the sculptures that still live on. So to me, there's, there is an importance. I realize it, it's just where someone lived for 30 years, but uh, still somebody who made an, an important contribution to both the campus and the city. Um, and one other quick comment, um, Chris referred to some comments the mayor made uh, at a meeting this past Monday night uh, at the Prospect Hill Neighborhood Association at our monthly meeting. She said she's been having conversations with the university and 
Um, I don't want to put words in the mayor's mouth or speak for her, but apparently the indication is that the university may be focusing more on graduate students to head off the enrollment slope uh, so that more graduate students would be on campus. And typically, small houses like these are, are more uh, enticing for graduate students because they provide a little more stability. You're in a quieter part of town where the focus you know, for them is on study, dissertations, uh, thesis work, as opposed to the larger structures where undergrads uh, may flock to. Um, but I appreciate all that you do, and yeah, if you would consider at least a delay on these, I think that would that could be a helpful step. Thank you. All right, thank you, Richard. Uh, any other comments, Just Daniel? Um, so, Ma are you Sable? By I am. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I do have a question. So, sure. if if I remember correctly, <laughs> you had said earlier that um, the client you are working for this is for part of a real estate transaction. Yes. <coughs> And so what they are looking at is they are not necessarily going to come in and tear these down. They just want to be able to have that option they on the table. They just want the option, yes. So, so just to ask, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if this would make an effect on any of the, my fellow commissioners, but after what um, Steve had said, which thank you very much, Steve. I do appreciate your information. Do you think your client uh, would be willing like Steve said, with the length of time that is needed, which is well beyond the year for the demo delay, would your client be willing to work with someone like Steve, even if it means that you know it's 14, 16, I think those were the, the, the timelines-ish. Um, do you I mean, would your client be willing to work with someone like Steve at BRI to be able to, ha it would extend beyond that, but in good faith, do you think they'd work on that? I don't think they would want to wait that long, but I'm not comfortable fully answering that. I, it would be hard to answer that without having a conversation. Okay. The only reason I, I'm I don't asking, think it would be ideal. The only reason I'm asking is I just didn't know if, if the site plan, if, if that's able to be like if, for instance, if we approve the demolition delays today, within a year to be able to turn around a full demolition and and building thing in a year without already having an idea or having that in hand already. Sure. So that's that's why I'm, I'm questioning it and that's why I just wanted to know. So if we did delay, would you be willing to talk to your client and just see what possibilities are there? Okay. Uh, Ernest, do you have your hand up? Well, yes, the, I did. The um, with the timing. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Sable. What you just said is, like I said, it's a contingency and a deal. So we only have an allotted amount of time, which we're nearing our deadline to fulfill this contingency. So if we don't get it, the, they probably won't even purchase the property. So I think, because we were here last meeting and it got pushed to this right. meeting, so I don't think that would work for us. Any other additional comments oh. first? I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, um, just to, to touch on that point, um, Sable is correct. This is primarily a contingency to the deal to make sure that it's not something that the commission views as being, you know, likely to be historic. But there are leases in place on these, you know, and these, the deal is subject to these tenant leases, mm -hmm. and they are leased for the next school year. Oh, okay. So it is, they're not, nobody's tearing this thing down tomorrow. To be clear. Thank you. I just have a point and question. So if they're not intending, if they have leases in place for a year and they're not quote unquote intending to demolish these houses within the year, why do you need a demo? Why do you need this? If it's only via viable for a year, why do you need a, a demolition? Why do you need this demolition? It sounds like the buyer wants to buy mm -hmm. them with the ability but like you can understand this, if, if they have leases in place for a year, then what is the logic of needing this particular thing since I, it will the expire? Yeah. I think the well, idea is expired in May, so so not, not the leases, a May so it's still a May from May, May and a year, and a year from now. right? So the, they, they and, can also negotiate to cancel out the leases. I know there are lots of leases that say property sold. Okay, so that's my point, is that, that there's a little bit of 
little of a thing we brought out. Am yeah. Ambiguity or disingenuousness, I would say, to be, if I'm not going to be polite. But. I have a question for <laughs> Can a potential buyer apply for a demolition or permit on a property? Well, it sounds like this owner is applying for it in order to be able to sell it. To sell give it. a benefit so the to the applicant. Them. The applicant is the seller. No. Yes, who yeah, currently, yeah, owns it. <coughs> currently owns it. And once, owns all of these buildings? It sounds yeah. like it. Yeah, it sounds like, yeah, currently owns it and wants to be able to sell it with the uh, assurance that these buildings could be torn down. Sounds like, yeah, that's correct. Even though the leases, even though the permit will be good, good for a year and the leases right. go for a year. Yeah, that's and that's a transaction between whoever owns Um, how long has the clock been running on these? 24 days. Okay. We have six left. Six? Six. Mm -hmm. We don't have 19? Well, no. Oh, no, it should be 90, shouldn't it? So they've only applied for 24 days. Right. So we have 90 days to give a decision. If that's the case, are we correct on that margin? I'm checking that. Yeah, um, just make sure. Yeah. Right, I mean, it says in the guidelines, well, the HBCS. Well, establishment of a district, you have 90. Is that what you're talking about? No, no, no. demolition delay. Do we have 90 days to make the decision? Yeah. 90 or 120. Well, here. generally in the guidelines, it's for 90 days. Yeah, I have the ability mm -hmm. to extend it to 120 days. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're only 20 something. So we're yeah. 24 days in, so we still have time. But I think it might be a moot issue to Sable's point is that the buyer may walk. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But that our decision isn't dependent upon whether the buyer buys or not. Yeah. Right. At that point. Yeah. I mean, right. that decision is what we made yeah. to do. So now we have another option to delay this to our next meeting. Uh, and then we could also ask NOAA to prepare, start preparing documents to, to designate it as a historic district. Because we'd have to write stuff up and get it ready and move it forward. Or we can move forward and allow the demolition to take place. Given that, if I can come Given that uh, the article just came out in the HT, we're not going to hear anything today, obviously. We're, if we do hear something, we'll hear it by the next meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would say that I, I'm leaning towards tabling to the next meeting, but not pulling the trigger on you know, preparing documents until we see what the neighborhood uh, feedback is. Thinks. May I make another comment? Sure. Yeah. Are we sure that the H team didn't put something in for the last meeting because they interviewed me before the last meeting? I just check the paper every day. Okay. I did not see it. Okay. okay. I don't remember. Really so I just wanted to make sure because they did call me before mm -hmm. the last Four meeting. Four yeah. So would you like to entertain a motion? Well, we also have one more question from Ernest. Okay, yes, mm -hmm. Ernest. Go ahead, oh. Ernest. Mm -hmm. this, oh, I didn't. Sorry, I didn't oh. have a question. Oh, okay. I, okay. I apologize. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry. So, um, we said we want to make a motion to put this on the agenda for our next meeting. So moved. Second. Second. All right. Okay. So, Sable, you guys are doing our next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have to vote on it? Yeah, we have to vote on it. So, we have to have a discussion. Wait, wait, we just had a discussion. Yeah, there's a, there's a new motion before. <laughs> well, but we didn't have a motion before. No, but once you have a new motion mm -hmm. before, you have to have to ask for discussion. discussion. All right. To discuss the motion. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> discussion, period. I've already discussed, uh, given my comments on why I wanted to propose this, so. Is there, is there a reason not to go forward with the, in a parallel situation to study the area? I mean, that's your problem. That's your problem. I mean, well, it sounds like to me the two reasons, there's two reasons why we would uh, table this for now, either because 
we're waiting to see now that more people have heard about these houses, whether they might be interested in buying and relocating them, or alternatively, uh, if there's any interest in designating a district. So um, I could go ahead and do uh, the documentation for looking at a district, but if um, you know our aim is to see if anybody's interested in buying and relocating the buildings, then that wouldn't necessarily be um, you know, the best use of our time. But isn't there like some cursorial way that you could, with a, I mean, you could pick out some of the houses and see, well, what is, you know, what looks like a, you know, a house or mm -hmm. houses that are, or areas of the, the area. I mean, it's a big district, it's platted in. I could prepare a study for next meeting. Um, Just sort of a general kind of a, wait, mm -hmm. one, just wait one second, okay, please. Because, I mean, it depends on the sort of documentation that you want, because there could be a study, something more informal, um, or it could be, you know, an ordinance and a uh, more formal description of a district. And, I mean, that depends on what our goals are and uh, what sort of timeline you're looking at. Well, I mean, the only reason I'm asking for, the, mm -hmm. for this is because we, I mean, I have been sick, so I haven't been here mm -hmm. in a while, but, um, you know, the, the last meeting I was to, mm -hmm. there, a similar thing happened where, and I think what, you know, Chris is saying and what Duncan mm -hmm. is saying and also, um, mm -hmm. it's an important sort of uh, template that we should start because if we don't start it now, it's just going to keep rolling. I mean, this this is a rolling problem, and we have to start somewhere and make some kind of a statement about neighborhoods like this, I think, because it's, you know, zoning, I get it that the land is very valuable, but also there are ways of developing things like this that are more sensitive than others. Like the French Freeway. I mean, we're not talking about that, I get it, but what I'm right. saying is that why can't we look at these houses in like a kind of a scat scattershot way? I mean, you know that someone, like this house is pretty impressive mm -hmm. for history mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. visually. There's another house in this um, packet that seems to be, you know. So are you recommending what? Did we do a designation? No, like I'm just saying that in order to get a district, you have to have enough content. Mm -hmm. You have to have enough meat to get it all, you know. Yeah, so that's what you do. Right? Yeah, but Willie, mm -hmm. is that, a, in t Sam's saying no, he doesn't think that should happen. I'm not I'm thinking, you're putting words in my mouth. No, it you shouldn't happen now. Saying, it well. shouldn't happen now. You said. So I'm thinking, well, is no, it more time efficient to just go forward with this but that's not what simultaneously? Sam well, I think he did say that he didn't want mm -hmm. it to happen right now. No, what he was saying was, he does. He wants to hear what happens in two. Oh, right. Sorry. Exactly. Exactly. I, I get what's, that. What's I saying? get that. I get that. That's what I know that. But what I'm saying is that, in my opinion, it should. We should start now thinking about what is val if this is valuable or not, as a district. I mean, it's fine to say, okay, these, you know, half a dozen houses. Somebody might want to buy them, and move them. Maybe two of them. Um, but now we're looking at a district a whole district that has the same kind of platted individual small worker houses, okay? And yeah, sure, the land is more valuable than the houses themselves, but if it could be a district, there there has to be a certain amount of meat to hold it all together. And I'm just saying, isn't there some sort of cursorial way you could determine whether there is any there there at this point? I mean, there have been study areas around town, like Cottage Grove, which we've discussed in the past, where there's been, you know, prospective interest in a district, so a study has taken place to describe what that district would look like. Uh, it sounds like that's sort of what you're hoping for in this case. Well, I think it's, it, I mean, what, you, what I gleaned from what you said was there are a bunch of houses that were built post-war, there were a bunch of houses that were built in the 20s, maybe. Um, there were two different halves of this neighborhood. One might be more significant than mm -hmm. the other half. Um, I'm just saying that, is there some way that you could 
just make a just a very beginnings look at this to see whether it's even feasible. Yeah, I think that could happen, Marlene. I agree that, that a study needs to be done to do that district, mm -hmm. but that should have been done five, ten years ago. I get when it. When we started doing this. At this point, I'm not sure that we could save, uh, it, we could make the district in time to save these houses. I can say, regardless of what happens, you know, with these individual houses, that's something I could work on at some point, you know, now or later, if we want to discuss that. Um, I don't think this is time to but, discuss that. Right. Is it's that going to be part of our conversation about what we're doing with these applications? Right. And then we can deal with that at a different time. Right. Uh, Sam, you had, you had something you want to say. Yeah. Uh, I don't disagree with Marlene. Mm -hmm. I did want to suggest that perhaps uh, more productive or better use of NOAA's limited time would be to see if there is any neighborhood interest in uh, forming a district. Because if we don't have the support of the neighbors, we're dead in the water no matter what kind of study we put out. I mean, politically, that's. I think that's how it is. And if you know, you send out postcards just like a straw poll to the property owner saying, would you be interested in exploring this and you know having a short list of benefits and what is kicking this into gear? Um, basically, that's all I wanted to suggest. And that's why I was going to suggest tabling this until the next meeting such that we would have time to do a short something, see if it was at all viable, and then if it does look viable, we take that next step and stick note on the exploration more seriously of what it would take to get it to be a district. Yeah. 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 I mean, the first step in, a, in looking for a district is to walk the district. Yeah, and, and as I think Marlene's language, is there a there there? And, and I think that, that could be something that could almost be done in a drive-through and with, with a little bit of mapping. That's, the, that's different from proposing that he start working on a designation, which is much more complicated right. in a large district and would take probably a year to, to really do well. Mm -hmm. So if you want to, I, I suggest knowing if there's a there there <laughs> is, mm -hmm. is, would, be good, would be good information, but I'm a little skeptical personally that there is a there there. <laughs> Thank you, Duncan. Um, Bernard, I, you were talking earlier. Is there something you want to add? I know Bill has something to add to. I mean, I'm, I'm in favor of tabling it at least till the next meeting to okay. see if we have any support. Sounds good, Bill. Yeah. And I, I guess my comments go along similar to Sam's. You know, the first thing that I noticed was there doesn't appear to be neighborhood support. But by tab tabling it, if there is a newspaper article, obviously that, that gives us a great opportunity to determine that, as well as I love what Duncan said about um, boots on the ground, seeing if there is any motivation. Because um, everyone's exactly correct. If there's no motivation from the people in the area, it doesn't really matter what we want to do at the end of the day. Um, you know, the other thing I noticed with these particular properties um, is they're in view of the university. I mean, when you look at the street view, you can see university buildings. So that brings into question, would these homes ever be anything except um, rental properties? Because as, as far as low-income housing goes, I'm not sure that's the case with the homes on this street. Now, other parts of the neighborhood, mm -hmm. and I, I know for a fact, there are beautiful homes in other parts of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's absolutely worthwhile to find out what that neighborhood wants to do. Um, the other thing that I heard, I mean, you know, zoning is one thing, but I think all of these properties are rental properties today. They are, yes. Mm -hmm. um, They're all fully awesome. Yeah, and so, and then from a designation standpoint, I think Duncan, um, I learned a lot listening to him talk about the different types of facades that exist in this area. 
And when we went down the street, you could see all the different types of facades. So pulling that together also, I think, um, complicates things. So now with everything that I just said, knowing that's the way it is, would we ever elevate these homes up to city council to try and save them? Because I think that's a big hill to go up. Uh, now, with that said though, other homes within this geographical area and finding out if they would want a historic designation because there's some really cool homes in there, I think that's, that's worth spending some time on. Absolutely worth spending some time on. And delaying it, I think as Sam said, to see what the public interest is, um, I, I think that's valuable as well. If, if I may say something, have we gotten over that obstacle before? I mean, we there have been neighborhoods with very styles and, and different configurations of homes that have been designated. So that really isn't an obstacle per se, is it? It can be, but it isn't necessary. Yeah, not well. So, do we want to make a motion to table this to our next meeting? Motion to table. Yeah. 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 And just because we had so much discussion, the motion is to extend it for two weeks. To our yeah, table. to table it to the next yeah. meeting. Just being 100% safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I vote for that. <laughs> you will not lose. Sam DeSaller. Yes. <laughs> John Saunders. Yes. Elizabeth Mitchell. Yes. William Falk. Yes. Reynard Cross. Yes. Motion carries 7-0. All right, next meeting. Okay. Thank you, well, thank you for coming, April. Uh, I think we're moving on to new business. New business. And I think we're going to talk about sidewalks. Right. Um, let's see. Uh, there's been some conversations. Chris is still here. Um, about uh, starting a subcommittee that can focus specifically on issues related to sidewalks. Um, this has been a conversation topic that's been coming up more often because a lot of the uh, historic sidewalks in town are in a somewhat poor state of repair and a lot of people um, don't really understand who is responsible for them or uh, what it takes to retain them or the fact that um, this is something that Public Works has been helping us out on because they retain some of the historic pavers. Um, so I think it's important, you know, before I go ahead and, you know, say something to the people who are asking us about this, to have a group of commissioners who are interested in um, meeting with, you know, either other city departments or interested parties to discuss some of these rising issues related to sidewalks and uh, potentially like Duncan was saying, something that's a very important first step that we really don't have would be surveying historic sidewalks in town. Um, that could, you know, that's important. That would be a bit of an undertaking, but I think that would be possibly within the scope of this subcommittee. Mm -hmm. So just to ask, I know I've been on for a year or two right. on, but um, for surveying the mm -hmm. sidewalk, something like that, is that something like a committee member would help to do? Because I, I just don't know what that mm -hmm. would entail or if that's something like a survey crew, like a proper survey mm -hmm. crew has to do. Um, I'm just curious. I mean, I think that we, I think that, that's, we I would have, I wanted to want, yeah, I mean, it would have to be up to the uh, subcommittee to decide. I wouldn't want to ask anybody to take up all that time to personally go through and walk every sidewalk. Um, if I could get an intern <laughs> <laughs> and we think that's something that's worth doing. Um, I think that would be a great undertaking. So Noah, do we mm -hmm. have a list already of sidewalks? So Public Works uh, Street specifically maintains a list of sidewalks by, it basically it describes, you know, how intact they are and 
you know, some other features, like whether they have a curb or whether, um, you know, the raised above the street level, stuff like that, but not specifically materials or age. So we know where the sidewalks are. We don't know what they are. Mm -hmm. So maybe they yeah. could produce a uh, list for us to start with. I'm not pretty sure that Nancy did some of that. She may have. Mm -hmm. is it, is, have you found any? I haven't seen that yet. I could ask. Because, yeah, yeah, if that's in my file somewhere, that would be immensely helpful. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. they wrote something. I think mm -hmm. that is the right one. Yeah. We at least know where the hot spots are. So <laughs> that's a good starting point. I could help frame this a little bit more, too. Oh, of course. <clears throat> mm -hmm. We could easily set criteria. You know, when, when I look, I know all the sidewalks in my neighborhood. There's some where 80% is deteriorated, and it's a, it's a no-brainer to just take it out instead of having a process and somebody has to weigh or something has to be uncertain. Uh, you know, we could set criteria on a percentage of damage to that sidewalk, and we. The, the important thing is when the, when those are taken out that a percentage that the good stones are safe because they've now lasted 80, 90 years. They've proven that they will last another 90 by that. And uh, the repair then on sidewalks that need, there are a lot of them that need five or six stones, but you know, a missing stone makes it trippy. But you save a lot of money for the city without tearing those out. And you know, it costs, the mason would charge 50 bucks a stone or something like that, and the city would provide free stones. So we would set up some kind of a process as a committee in my in my mind to streamline and, and be right in coordinating with the other departments so that they know exactly what to do when they run into these sidewalks. You know, a sewer problem was in my neighborhood, that's what precipitated this. But they had to cut through the sidewalk and nobody knew what how do we do this? What do we do now? You know, and it worked out and we coordinated, but it made us think there ought to be a slicker way to do this. So, Georgie, I have a question about the sidewalk. Now, as far as my understanding is the homeowner owns the sidewalk, and it's the homeowner's responsibility to maintain that sidewalk. Is that a true statement? Yeah, we make the, we make the homeowner responsible by code. Okay. So but these sidewalks that we're discussing could potentially be a homeowner's responsibility. Yeah, it doesn't preclude the kind of collaboration mm -hmm. that you're talking about or the kind of committee that you're talking about. Right. And we, as a city, we do have an inventory of the sidewalks. They allocate um, the dollars that they have each year to repairing certain sidewalks based on priority basis. Um, I recently recommended to Adam Leeson that that goes to the Board of Public Works for their blessing. Because there are legal reasons to do that, um, but I do think that this, and you know, this council very recently had a conversation about a small amount. I think two hundred fifty thousand dollars. If I remember, that they put in towards their their committee to make sidewalks. I mean, sidewalks are certainly something of interest for the council, for our staff, for you guys. I think that collaborative repairs should be a good thing. Neighborhoods also will mm -hmm. do small and simple grants for mm -hmm. sidewalk repairs too. So if this is in place and the, you know, the material really is available and mm -hmm. we're a little more conscientious mm -hmm. about saving it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. something simple that can be done even without a subcommittee is uh, there's some yeah. updates I need to make to uh, the city website for you know the parts that deal with historic preservation. If we can add information about. Um, the fact that public work has some of these has some of these papers, and I don't want to speak for them, but you know, could offer some sort of help or advice to uh, property owners with historic sidewalks adjacent, uh, just to sort of demystify that for people who would otherwise be afraid of, you know, touching one of them. And with clear criteria, staff could be the approval of sidewalk work, so there are no you have to come in and sit through a meeting about your sidewalks. Mm -hmm. So do we have, uh, do we want to set up a subcommittee and do we have volunteers or? I'd be interested just to mm -hmm. learn more about it just because I'm, I'm quite curious oh, okay. and I know the various condition, but I do like to walk, when I, you know, from here mm -hmm. to the History Center and back. So um, I'd, be, I'd be interested. Is your ankle up for it? It's getting a lot better. Okay, nice. <laughs> <laughs> some, I've been told some of those pavers are dangerous, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Two down. Okay. okay. Down sure. Mm -hmm. And anybody else who has any interest in this, uh, you can feel free to reach out to me. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. What else is on our agenda there? Um, Let's see. Um, old business. There actually is some old business. Um, for starters, um, Justin Fox, you may remember, he applied to restore um, the John L. Nichols World Courier Building. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, just yesterday, I attended the uh, BUEA. Um, meeting and grant funding was allocated to both of his facades so it's you know the amount that they can allocate is a drop in drop in the bucket but it'll be great to see that building restored um another thing this just came up recently is we received a sample ceiling or roof tile um from weininger real estate's representative uh this would be for um fingers crossed uh, Restoring the uh, tiled Pretty parapet mm -hmm. on the Willow Terrace apartment building. <laughs> um, so we can have a show and tell. Um, is mm -hmm. that the color that was there before, or is it just a sample they sent us? That's the sample that they sent us. Um, it's ordered from Ludovici um, Tile, which that was the company that had come up in the last meeting that they attended. It's slightly different colors and dimensions from the original tiles, which were more of an orangish terracotta. Um, they weren't tapered in this shape. Looks pretty good though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright, what else, Noah? Um, unless I'm forgetting something, I think that's more or less, okay, we do have some new business coming up. Um, Can I ask you a question yes. about that? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, there was conversation before that they had actually applied before for a C of A and gotten permission to replace it with a clay tile. Is that true or is that not true? That that uh, procedurally, I'm just wondering if they already have approval from this body to move forward on replacing it with clay tile if they do that. I remember it's a conversation. If that, that COA had, hasn't expired. I remember that mm -hmm. they were going to have to get a CBA if they wanted to use non-clay. Mm -hmm. But is it act? Does anybody remember? Do they have a CBA, or do we need to look back through minutes to find out they if they already have a CBA to replace it with the clay? I think we should go back to minutes, but I can't really recall that we issued the CBA, provided that they use the clay tile. Yeah, that's what I have a. But again, let's we'll go back to the minutes and make sure that that mm -hmm. must have expired. Mm -hmm. It probably has expired by now. So, so they, they, do they you want them to come back and have a conversation with you about replacing it with a clay? Well, I think material? if their COA is expired, yeah. yeah, they need to come back. I mean, I hate to say that, <coughs> yeah. but yeah, they need to come back. At this point, they <coughs> have approval. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Could you approve that tile? Would that be useful? Um, I mean, I'd like to get people's opinions here, but I'd be happy to issue a staff approval if that would move things along. Yes. I walked by the uh, building in question today with that tile, and that tile is a different profile. I don't. So it's a question for me of how important is it that it matches the existing mm -hmm. stuff because they're going to leave some existing mm -hmm. stuff on there on that lower porch roof, right. mm -hmm. <laughs> and the existing stuff does not taper. It has this barrel shape in there with the same size that you can, and I think Noah told me the other day that that came from uh, that company in Ohio that we suggested. Uh, Ludovici. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they make a straight barrel shaped uh, profile, which I, I don't know what the cost difference is. They make it in a variety of colors and textures and la 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 la. So um, if it's, you know, six one half a dozen of the other, I just as soon see something that matched the <coughs> existing m more closely because that tile is a little bit higher a lot skinnier and a different profile so you know if they can get something closer without it being a markup or even being cheaper um, I wouldn't have 
I, that would make me happier. All right. So is it possible, Noah, that you could get in touch with this manufacturer and get a brochure or get a sample okay. that matches mm -hmm. more what Sam's talking mm -hmm. about? Because I agree with Sam. That's not the color. I mean, I've been by that house for that building too many times. And mm -hmm. That's not even the same style. Yeah. And it's totally different. And I would say, Margie, yeah, they're going to need to come back to us. But, you know, obviously what they brought is not what we were expecting and not exactly what was part of the original CMA. So okay. I think they need to have them come back. I think we need to find out for sure mm -hmm. what's available because they may not be telling us what's available or this is mm -hmm. what they want to use for various reasons. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to know mm -hmm. all the details. <coughs> Yeah, I right. remember something really weird about that. They did get an approval, I think. I believe they and, got approval. But then approval. they put metal on. No, they never got the approval. The, the no, approval was to replace it right, with... No, I know, but I think they... There is oh, they no, did. They went ahead and put metal on. Yes, yes that's I agree. what I'm saying. <laughs> I think that happened before they came into us or... Maybe oh. it was right after. I forget what they Well, they had applied for a retroactive COA after they had yeah, installed the metal on. Metal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And that was not accepted. Uh, another thing... If I can move on under kind of old, kind of new business, is after our next meeting on uh, May 24th um, in City Council Chambers at I believe it's 6 p.m., uh, Duncan Campbell is going to be uh, giving a memorial talk about Nancy Hiller, who I'm sure some or a lot of you uh, remember. She was a great craftswoman and uh, preservationist and a uh, you know, they expound her on topics including uh, ethics and aesthetics and uh, the English arts and crafts movement. So I would absolutely uh, recommend that any of you who knew Nancy or are interested in any of those topics attend. Is there anything you'd like to add, Duncan? Did you ever get posters or anything for that? Um, I shared the event on Instagram and printed off some posters. We should, we should put it up in the bookstores oh, and yeah. places like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're running out of time, but mm -hmm. I know a lot of people have asked me when it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Well, so. Duncan brought, or Duncan, Noah brought some to the History Center, so we've told people, and we have some of Nancy's books, mm -hmm. so we've been promoting it with those okay. as well. Right. So, um, I, I mean, so we did do that. Blooming before. Foods, you know, the mm -hmm. usual suspects. Right. I printed off a bunch of posters, some <coughs> for that, some for an ongoing photo contest this month. I can print off some more of the... Uh, Nancy Hiller posters just to make sure that we've got our bases covered. And then, I don't, right. No. Um, Last time we mm -hmm. supposed to do it, I got COVID the day before, so mm -hmm. that's why it got canceled. But um, we had a lot of publicity out there, and it was oh, yeah. quite a crowd at, mm -hmm. at the door when mm -hmm. it was locked. All right, you want to do that? You put it on Facebook. I'm also speaking at the History mm -hmm. Center on the 18th. It's a follow-up on the historic barn display that they have there now. Uh, I think it's it's the 18th at 1:30 in the afternoon. It's like a Saturday, yeah, Saturday. which is a lecture on uh, the history and evolution of American barn styles. And I'd like to invite everybody out to Juneteenth, Switch York Park, the unveiling of a marker to honor the Black Underground Railroad conductors. Oh, great. Are we ready for adjournment? Um, that, those are some commissioner comments. Um, you got them? Is there anything else? I have a, I have a question. Sure. I saw, yeah. I think it was an email from you about mm -hmm. some discussion about the historic sidewalk over on Dunn Street. Yes. And is there anything to report on that? Um, so that's a conversation I've been having with a few people, including uh, this is something that I'd like to address in a subcommittee, and I don't have any specific plans yet. Um, I was uh, told by somebody um, in city government that they were interested in undesignating that sidewalk, which is currently individually listed as a historic district, um, because there has not been any maintenance from the adjacent property owner since, I think, well, I can't say none, but the stones were last reset in 1993. 
so um, there's been some conversation about you know how we get ahead of this and you know of course the sidewalk has come to the commission before there was a proposal in 2017 to relocate it to uh, the Hinkle Garden Farmstead on 10th Street uh, I mean it was decided that you know relocating this historically downtown sidewalk so far away would uh, effectively eliminate its historic context um, so the conversation that we're having right now is about either can it be restored in place I mean it can or if it was going to be moved uh, where would be an appropriate a more appropriate location where it could be reinstalled um, and I've contacted uh, the History Center as well as the Parks Department um, and you know obviously this isn't something that a single person can sign off on but um, I've been hearing some sort of positive comments so you know if the sidewalk can't be restored in place we aren't without options to move it somewhere closer so i guess the question i would have is can it be restored restored in place and still be ada accessible and that seems like a stretch yeah so in 2017 the first time around i went to the site there's enough acreage there to restore the uh, historic sidewalk in place and install a parallel adjacent ADA rated sidewalk, provided they move one parking meter. Yeah, tree. And mm -hmm. I think there's room even with the tree in place. Mm -hmm. The tree's right in the middle where the sidewalk would be. I, I mm -hmm. understand that, but it's like three foot, unless the tree grew a lot since okay. 2017, you got three feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and sorry, I Adam and more communicative about this, it's just I haven't heard anything official from anybody yet, so it's hard to say how much I can share, but anybody who's been part of these conversations or would like to continue being part of these conversations, um, even aside from the sidewalk <coughs> subcommittee, I can let you know if there's a conversation coming up that you know it could be helpful to have people attend. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I just, so you know, if you move it, the designation is dead. Right. Um, and it sounds I'm like, not, yeah. Personally, all mm -hmm. that against moving it but, right you know i think if it could be mm -hmm. preserved some way yeah. that people could understand it and mm -hmm. it could be interpreted i'm yeah. not mm -hmm. particularly beholding that it be a historic district but yeah it sounds I like am, the, i oh, am yeah. concerned that that sidewalk mm -hmm. be safe right and, and i it's not now mm -hmm. okay. i suggest we refer to it as bloomington's first sidewalk right you know it is a celebration mm -hmm. of the sidewalks mm -hmm got people out of the street where the horse poop was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and that's what it was for. Yeah, I didn't see it on your agenda for the committee for the subcommittee, yeah. so mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. You gonna join us, Duncan? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll include you in the uh, email list. Very good, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. Are we in adrenaline? It's almost seven o'clock. That's all I wrote. Mm -hmm. We're trying. I got a minute to go, guys. Okay, mm -hmm. we're adjourned.